good evening wherever you're watching from thank you all for coming back and to all my new subscribers thank you so 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 much for subscribing i love you guys so without wasting much of your time let's talk about face face care skin type how to determine your exact skin type your face type and the products to use for your specific challenge face challenge and the product to use for your de uh, specific face type so we have to understand that if you're using the product that is not like you're using the wrong product for your skin type you will not get the results you require so we will talk about all that today understanding your skin type understanding the kind of product you should use learning to read some ingredients on the product label so that you know if it's good for your skin type so without wasting much ado first of all let's talk about washing our face washing our face you have to do this twice a day in the morning when you take your bath in the evening before you go to bed you have to wash all the dust from all the day walking around the street even if you're sitting in your office all day trust me that's why you sweep your office because there are dust particles they rest on your skin on your face especially your face is the most exposed part second to your hands and your hands go everywhere you don't know what your hands touch you don't even know if you wash properly putting it on your face like this so at the end of the day you need to wash your face before you go to bed okay sebum is an oily substance waxy substance your skin produces it produces this and creates a thin coat on your face to protect dust bacteria penetrating into your skin and it's good it, it because it moisturizes the skin as well and as good as it is it can also be bad if it's uh, if your face releases too much sebum okay so where is the sebum located where does it come from all our face every part of our body have hair follicles pores the pores on your face those holes some people have large pores some people have like nearly to invisible pores but everybody has pores and the pores is like the sweat gland where your face produces sweat okay and that's where the sebum comes from so it uh, many many comes from the sweat glands and some exist independently and it creates that shine and that smooth finish on your skin making a uh, you know making your skin to be moisturized and smooth this, this secretion of sebum can also be counterproductive especially when you don't wash your face morning and night especially in the night after going about your daily routine and you don't wash off the sebum from your face that's when it becomes counterproductive most times some people release too much excessive sebum and that has to do with your hormones or your testosterone for men your testosterone for women your hormones your hormones so very active uh, your androgens help regulate overall production of sebum from your face so very active androgens or testosterone produce more uh, adrenaline glands and your ovaries and your testes this is what helps regulate and pushes the production of sebum from your face so the more active androgens the more active testosterone the more sebum your body produces so if so say sebum and age it, it does sebum and your age does come to play your age plays a big role on your sebum production the younger you have say from your 20s to your 30s that is when your sebum production is quite higher so so you can see sebum helps with uh, moisturizing your skin and keeping your skin healthy and youthful and the older you get the more the, your sebum production reduces so when you hit puberty your sebum production increases up to 500 percent and increases into adolescent male adolescent female adolescent you know the more uh, sebum your face produces and often people that produce more uh, sebum are acne prone yeah like oily skin so but doesn't mean that people with uh, near to invisible uh, pores don't produce they do they just don't produce as much as people with oily skin and 
acne prone skin uh, how can you balance sebum production yes you can balance sebum production your diet plays a very active role on your sebum production topical products like the products you use on your skin apply on your skin soaps and creams uh, they they play a very big major role to your sebum production as well not to say naturally you don't produce you do but certain products you use like say for instance i have an oily skin uh, like oily face if i use olive oil product on my face the sebum i'm going to produce is going to be so much because i already have a large pores yes i do have a large pores and oil production the sebum production is more so i cannot use any type of oil for my face so that's what we're going to talk about i can just apply any product on my face without checking the ingredients in fact that is why i prefer to make my own products because then i know what's inside so that and many more we'll talk about uh you can use a uh, prescription hormonal uh products to control your sebum production because when your hormones like i say your hormones are high your testosterone are high your sebum production increases so if you're breastfeeding you're pregnant the more sebum you produce so if you're on hormonal pills a birth control pills contraceptive your sebum production increases and your diet eating oily food peanuts uh, there's certain foods you can you eat and you know that spicy food like for me if i eat too much spicy food it will affect my sebum production and i'll start breaking out so if you know what you eat and you can control these things and then you can control your sebum production so we're going to talk about products knowing your skin type things you will use and things to avoid that way you can control your sebum production and at the other hand control how your skin reacts and how to balance your skin and make it look fantastic stay tuned now we're going to talk about the oils that's best for your skin type so if you have say dry and mature skin avocado oil sunflower oil apricot kennel oil ojoba oil that's the one spelled with j-o-j-o it's pronounced ojoba ojoba oil sweet almond oil for dry mature skin oily or acne prone skin ojoba oil sisin oil argan oil grapeseed oil even primrose oil that's for oily and acne prone skin say skin and if you notice most of my pro if you watched my previous videos you will notice that i use grapeseed oil a lot yes so grapeseed oil acne prone skin oily skin is fantastic now sensitive skin sunflower oil jojoba oil avocado oil argan oil grape seed oil and for dry skin avocado oil sesame oil apricot oil yes you can use all this so i think i've mentioned this before good do you understand your skin type how to identify your skin type <clears throat> normal skin normal skin neither oily or dry few discoloration blemishes free appears smooth even without using any product or treatment it appears smooth that's normal skin oily skin shiny appearance enlarged pores prone to acne prone to blackhead dry skin flaky dry or red patches or black patches tight in appearance looks dull and lacks moisture flaky and lines may develop easily sensitive skin blushy patches anything you use just react your face just reacts scratchy itchy redness pores broken capillaries may feel itchy you know yeah so that's sensitive skin combination skin that means your t-zone here same here to your nose and under your eye here are oily but the rest of other parts are dry so that's combination skin is like normal and dry and oily so it's called combination skin have oily areas dry areas prone to blackhead large pores okay so those are type of 
difference between breakouts and skin purging our skin naturally purges uh, unhealthy bacteria from our skin that's why we sweat so when your skin is purging you might think it's pimples acne or breakout there's a difference so how do you distinct this purging from breakouts purging on your face is when there's a sudden appearance of small clusters of outbreaks in areas you tend to see you take care of this part frequently then all of a sudden uh, something comes up break up come out it's not a breakout it's actually purging that means whatever you're doing is working so you don't go telling your skin therapist that oh the product you give me i'm using it here and something came out here it's actually purging it's doing its job okay so it's not itchy it's not swollen it's not a painful breakout so that means it's purging if it's a breakout it's consistent breakout in that area that you don't typically typically take care of that's a breakout can be itchy and can be painful okay and uh, the kind of product you use increases uh, because our, our, our skin makes a turnover like of a new skin cell every 28 days better still 21 days so increasing cell turnover rates helps that's what a uh, breakout does i mean uh, sorry purging does it helps increases the turnover of a new skin cell and uh the things you can use for this is a, a retinoid, something with vitamin A called retinoid. Vitamin C, exfoliate, when you exfoliate with AHA or BHA, PHA or scrubs, that's when your skin purges. So when you're using anything with scrub or retinoids, vitamin A, vitamin C, your skin will purge. Purging, what will make it break out? is uh, caused by comedogenic products any product that is comedogenic that is not good for your skin you're using this product and you break out when you break out and it's painful it's itchy that means that product you're using is not good for you but when you're using a product and you get something that comes out of that place but it's not itchy it's not painful it's not you know then that is purging and it's a good thing so usually purging lasts about say a month or say three weeks to two weeks yeah some people can be lucky and their purging can last for seven days but if there's no improvement after this period of time say let's say one month if there's no improvement then consult your skin therapist because that is not purging anymore that is breakout or a reaction or an allergy to certain product food or whatever it is you've been using check your routine check back two weeks back what you've been eating constantly what you've been using steadily then you can be able to determine the cause of your allergy or your breakout so acne on your forehead could be related to digestive problems small intestine problems stress lack of sleep too much sugary food, toxin build up in your body, and for female, mostly hair products and wearing too much face caps. Your temples in between your brows could be related to poor diet or diet high in fat, too much processed food, weak heart, too much alcohol. Your nose could be poor diet, constipation, gastrointestinal imbalance, or poor blood circulation. Your chin and your jaw could be hormonal problems, gynecological issues, kidney imbalance, or resting your hands, dirty hands on your face, and dirty phones. Lip area could be related to constipation, too much spicy fried food, and the right cheek could cause uh, be allergy or dirty cell phones, dirty pillowcase, makeup brushes, dirty makeup brushes, and so on. And left cheek could be your liver overheating of um, food, stomach problems, dirty cell phones, dirty makeup brushes, you know, and um, it could be related to health issues in your body, intestinal, your intestine, just indicating the problems through acne. 
and face mapping that indicates the root cause of your acne on your face one intestinal organ two bladder three heart four liver pancreas kidneys gallbladder stomach lungs large intestine pelvic organs and also you can have acne on your body as well and your body also indicates how and the root cause of this depending on the part of your bodies you can identify the root cause of the acne number one says hormones two and three stress digestive system vitamin levels blood sugar levels hygiene or stds skin sensitivities or allergies nervous and digestive system 13 and 14 says digestive systems so please listen to your body and the signs your internal organs give you indicating the root problem of your intestinal organs so do not brush it off when you see acne on your body sometimes you can identify the problem and you know apply the necessary solution rather than just waiting for it to get out of hand it's best we pay attention to our bodies so even when you have acne they had different types of acne different types trust me and each of them have their own name and have various way you can treat them and identify the type of acne you have we have five different type of acnes one white head black head purples postals and nodules blackheads pore is open and sebum accumulation has oxidized white hair sebum accumulation is covered by a thin layer of skin purple is tender often sensitive red and pink bumps postal is often yellow or white head with redness at the base of the swelling nodules had tender pimples and banded deeply under the skin and normally nodules are the ones that are quite painful because as you can see in the photo it doesn't protrude through the skin it's under the skin and it's quite very very painful so yeah common mistakes that we make when taking care of a face like using a dirty abrasive towel to wash your dry skin applying your facial cleanser to dry skin not washing your hands prior to washing your face not using the appropriate cleanser for your skin type or condition not cleansing your skin after removing your makeup and washing your face with water that is either too hot or too cold we should learn to avoid these mistakes please then these are the steps you can follow while taking care of your face number one cleanse twice a day toner use a toner twice a day exfoliate once a week use a max once a week treatment any treatment you're using use twice per day moisturize twice per day i care if you're using any you apply protect your skin daily with at least a minimum of 60 spf before going out regularly body care you do it as required with these steps i guarantee you will notice a tremendous change in your face no more face wahala <laughs> okay so let's learn to follow these guidelines and see tremendous results and here when you understand your skin type you will know the proper measures to follow according to your skin types to get tremendous results say normal skin sensitive skin acne prone skin dehydrated skin dry skin oily skin you follow the steps accordingly in this picture and you will notice that everything you've been doing before is wrong but with this step you will see tremendous results for your face so when trying to make your face max, these are some clay that can help you according to your skin types. Russell clay, bentonite clay, French green clay, full earth clay, curling clay, Australian pink clay. So you know how to incorporate it into your face max and ingredient according to your skin type and your targeted problem. Also, these are some 
max you can make and the steps to take to tr take care of your oily skin and it's just a idea you know something you can incorporate that will help you keep your face glowing and healthy and also here we have some max you can make and ingredients you can you don't have to use all of them all at once you can use few of them and just incorporate into your own home face max for your face oily skin this is what that's for and this is what you can use if you have combination skin remember not all of them at once you can take few of these ingredients and use them for your diy face max at home this is for combination skin combined skin which means oily skin acne prone skin dry skin can use and turmeric is another ingredient is very good for clearing acne brightening the skin face pigmentation glowing skin and removing scars so you can combine it with other ingredients as it says in the picture to create a face mask and use regularly for your face so for dry skin these are some ingredients you can use to make your own face mask at home and to treat your face according to your skin type dry skin and also these are some ingredients you can use for specific targets for your skin brighten skin clear skins and all that you can use these ingredients to do that to achieve fantastic results then aloe vera is very good for all skin types and it fights skin problems dry skin acne prone skin oily skin you can use aloe vera and this ingredients in the picture also for dark spots something to clear your dark spot pretty fast pretty pretty fast this ingredients in this picture will help you with that and give you fantastic results overnight without much ado i hope we've learned something today this is just part one of this video because talking about your face it's like a very very extensive subject there's no end to it but i'm going to break this into two parts or three parts just to give you a very good insight to understand it and to be able to help yourself without i'm not saying you shouldn't go to a skin therapist come on <laughs> they need to eat too so but just so before you start running to your skin therapist and plastering different products on your face you should be able to identify some of these problems and somehow apply your own solution before you start putting your face in someone else's hands because the face they say is the mirror to your soul to your internal organs just by spotting a breakout here it is telling you something that breakout is as a result of a certain problem inside your body okay so your face is like a map to your internal organs it tells you what's going on if your internal organs is unhealthy your face will tell you so thank you all for watching part one of this video and i'll make a next video about the part two of face but before then i'll make another video with products <clears throat> showing you products you can use you can make specifically for acne so my next video is going to be products for acne face max and face cream thank you all for watching i'm glad to have you come back watching my video thank you all for subscribing liking and sharing my videos i appreciate you guys so much god bless you bye